good morning one and all and welcome to the video this video i'm going to be talking about a very interesting question that i have received on my youtube channel that was hey somel how can i essentially put my mongo db data to elastic search for search purposes or for analytics purposes this video i'm going to be talking about the architecture and the concept on how we can do that i have a essentially a video on streams that i would leave in the description section below but let's talk about the concept on how we wanna do this all right i am gonna share my screen and let's get started with this all right so uh, the first thing that i need is, is a database right so so here is where your company might be using uh, you know mongodb where you're putting all the events or essentially orders or everything that that, that you have right and the ask essentially here is like, hey, Sawmill, can I put, how, how do I sync this in real time to, to, to Elasticsearch, right? So the way I would do that is essentially, uh, I would enable streams on MongoDB Atlas. So I have a video on that, which I will leave, leave it in the description section below. Um, so once you do that, what you want to do is um, now I'm going to select event bus, right? So event bus, let me see. I, I really like this tool. Uh, it, it really helps me. So, um, you know, so I'm going to put things on an event bus, right? So this is my real time MongoDB stream. So this is going to be my. So which is where your legacy data sets, right? Say, say you're using that uh, traditionally, right? Which is what I'm assuming. Uh, so you'll enable a MongoDB stream through which you will be putting the data on AWS event bridge, right? Or essentially an event bus, right? Now from here, guys, here, here is the architecture you want to follow, right? So we want to have a queue here. So you want to have a rule that essentially is going to filter those messages and put it on the queue. So now once you have all these messages, uh, whenever a user inserts into the Mongo or update, you have it in the SQS queue. From this, what you want to do, a classic application, you know, you, you want to fire a Lambda functions. Uh, I'm not sure why that did not work, but you wanna fire up a Lambda function, right? So now uh, essentially your Lambda function is the one that's gonna uh, put the data to the Elasticsearch, right? So now uh, in real time, this data is being, Mongo data is essentially being synced to your um, Elasticsearch, right? Now over there, you also wanna have a DLQ, which means if any particular, um, if any particular events or messages is failed, it would be put to the dead letter queue for uh, you know for processing and stuff like that. Uh, a classy architecture here is also um, you know uh, usually companies follow this. Usually, f if you need an ability to notify whenever a, a lambda fails, right, or an event was failed, um, so what you can do is you can uh, have a uh, you can publish a message to an SNS topic, and you can have email subscribers on your SNS essentially that uh, whenever the Lambda fails, it would send you an alert that, hey, this this one failed and then uh, what exactly happened, right? All the logs will be on the CloudWatch. So essentially you can go to CloudWatch and watch the logs. Uh, if you need a historical logs or of your events, uh, if you really need that application, what you can also do is in the same application uh, Lambda where it's deploying it, to, uh, where it's pushing the data to S3, uh, you can essentially partition your data. Uh, you can also dump the data to the data lake and if you essentially see the data like um, uh, strategy here would be um, so here you'll be having a database name and here you can put whatever the name or table name whichever you want like the placeholder now you can uh, depending upon how granular you want to get you can have a year partition uh, where you will say year year right and uh, if i can find this to increase this one a little bit I think it's this one and this one. No, oh, oops. I always uh, I always get this wrong for some reason. Uh, now, okay, so now you will have a month partition. So all essentially your events are also on S3. So in case if you want to restore your events uh, moving forward uh, later on, you know, uh, from um, uh, uh, say your elk was wiped out or something happened, then you can easily restore things from um, S3. You have your backup data there, right? Or you can reload it from Mongo as well, up to you what you want. Uh, now, another good practice uh, we want to do is um, uh, AWS S3. So uh, we'll have a bucket here. Essentially what this is going to do, uh, in my video, I taught you how to take snapshots from index, right? So you want to essentially take snapshots on regular basis on um, 
quarterly, monthly basis. So essentially in case a disaster event happened that your class index was wiped out, you can easily restore all the millions of data within a matter of uh, 20 minutes. Uh, so we were able to you know, restore data, uh, essentially 100 million records in a matter of 25 minutes, right, with the uh, snapshot. So you wanna take snapshot regularly of your L cluster. But uh, that's the architecture in a nutshell, right? Um, ideally, you wanna enable MongoDB streams. I have a video, I'll leave it in the description. Then from MongoDB streams, you wanna put those streams to an event event bus. From event bus, put it to a queue. From queue, fire up your Lambda. Lambda puts on the L Elk, and essentially also puts it on the S3. If you want that, right, you can do that. Uh, if the, you'll have enable max retry policy on Lambda for two times. So if it fails, it's gonna try one, one, once again, right? And, and, and then another time. And then if it fails, you can put it the message to the DLQ, that dead letter queue. And uh, if you want alerts uh, for a particular event that was failed, uh, you can publish a failed, um, uh, or you can invoke SNS essentially and have email subscribers there and you can get notified easily. Um, you want to take snapshot of your Elasticsearch cluster. That way you can easily restore it in case a disaster happens. That's in a nutshell on how you want to essentially uh, uh, move Mongo data to work, right? In real time, if you are trying to develop a search or analytics, uh, whatever the purpose is, right? That's the way you would do it. Hope this is useful. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I would see you guys in the upcoming next video.